This is Maria, the knockout queen, and we are back here in the next round. I got the champ, Robert. Hey, what up? I'm doing good. Hey, I'm up. Oh my God, I'm so excited. We have Ray Flores here. Yeah. Ray Flores. Please, please don't call me the champ in front of Mr. Ray Flores. Oh my goodness. That's embarrassing. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we have Ray Flores here from ESPN. Hey, Mr. Flores. How are you guys? It's a pleasure to be on the show. Hey, we're doing great. Thank you so much for joining us today. No, no, no doubt about it. Busy boxing weekend for sure here in uh, the Sweet Science. Yes, yes, indeed. Oh my goodness, um, there's so much to talk about. Uh, but I'm just gonna let the you know listeners you know give them a little bit about you and who you are, what you're about. So, Mr. Ray Flores, uh, you went to Columbia College in Chicago, a full-time ring announcer, play-by-play -play commentator for various MMA and boxing promotions. He's also a sports center anchor for ESPN Chicago AM 1000. Um, Ray has interviewed world champions such as Oscar De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather, Mania Pacquiao, Anderson Silva, Randy Couture. Um, you know, and Ray has also had the opportunity to co-announce with Michael Buffer. That is an awesome thing, sir. No, that was, uh, you're making me blush, actually, Marty, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a terrific run, and, and I'm being a part of combat sports and working here with ESPN. It's, uh, it's certainly a match made in heaven for me, so to speak. Yeah, dude, you are living the dream, man. I Just little have by you little, like, very fortunate to work for some of the greatest promotions in the world, so. Yes, indeed. Oh, my goodness. And you're, you're bilingual, correct? I am bilingual, so, and it has helped me out a lot because back in 2012, I did about 12 uh, solo book sales shows, English and in Spanish, for Golden Boy mm -hmm. on uh, Univision Deportes. So that was a lot of fun as well. Oh, my goodness. That's incredible. So, yo también soy Latina. Yo hablo español. So, yo uh, también. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> es una cosa muy bonito. <laughs> claro que sí. Muchas gracias. Sí, sí. But you know what? I'm going to talk English because Robert, he's half Mexican, but he's half Caucasian. Yeah, I don't, I don't speak Spanish, Mr. Flores. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine, Robert. I, I understand. <laughs> Entiende yeah. un poquito. He understands a little bit, right? Not much at all. I, I try to play it <laughs> off like I do, but I don't. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, Mr. Flores, if you don't mind, if I can start, you know, just asking you a few questions, if that would be okay? Yeah, not a, shoot, go ahead. Absolutely not a problem. I mean, I'm like a fighter. I mean, you know, we start off, I mean, you, you guys, I mean, whatever you guys have, I'm ready for. <laughs> that sounds good. Now, what are your thoughts on the Provodnikov versus Algeri bout? I know you were there, which was an awesome thing to be there, and uh, also with Michael. I can't wait Buffett. to hear this one. Yes. <laughs> So, what were your thoughts on, on that bout? Well, um, my heart was broken a little bit because I have become friends with Ruslan Provodnikov over the past year and yeah, year and a half. Yeah, I saw the pictures and everything. And, uh, you know, Ruslan is a tremendous fighter. Mm -hmm. he, he's promoted by Artie Palulo Banner Promotions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had an opportunity to get to know Vadim Korniaf, who is his manager as well. Mm -hmm. And sitting there ringside... I think Ruslan did enough to get the victory. Uh, the two knockdowns, very big in the first round. I agree. I think Ruslan pressured the fight mm -hmm. uh, during the course of the matchup. Uh, now, credit goes to Algeria for getting off the deck and still performing and lasting 12 rounds with Ruslan. I think Algeria did win some rounds during the fight. Mm -hmm. But if we look at Don Trella's scorecards, one of them, and I looked at all the scorecards, yes. Trella had the fight two through nine all to Algeria. When I saw the scorecards, I'm like, wait a minute, where, what was he watching? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I, I really don't, don't understand that. Right. I think Ruslan pulled off the victory, 116 I to 112. I totally agree. I'm with but you But again, it, it just, it just, that's the way boxing goes. It does. And, and it's the eye, when you, when you leave it in the hands of the judges, mm -hmm. then, Things like that happen. I mean, we can go ahead and look at, and, and thankfully this man did not get robbed, but Vasil Lomachenko, who captured the, his world title on Saturday night when he defeated Gary Russell Jr., mm -hmm. he, Lisa Giampa scored the fight 114 and 114 a draw. So rather than it be a clear cut unanimous decision victory for Vasil Lomachenko, it was 114. 114, and it just uh, what was what was she watching? Not only that, but <laughs> Yeah. I was behind the judge who scored the fight of oh, Canelo and Mayweather. Oh, who my scored it for yeah. Canelo. So I go, like, or, you know, or co called it a draw, beg your pardon. I, I like, what are you watching? I was sitting <laughs> right behind her, and I saw a dominant Mayweather performance, yeah. and she happened to call the fight a draw. Again, things like that happen in boxing. I think in combat sports in general, mm -hmm. there needs to be more 
uh, a conscientious effort to fix the judging that goes on. But again, right. that is why you do not leave the fight in the hands of the judges. And to be honest with you, you know, Al Jury did a nice job to keep on fighting, but he did. if the fight would have been stopped by the New York State Athletic Commission, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been opposed to it. But right. again, credit this- goes to Al Jury for fighting hard. Mm-hmm. He's in the world champion, and we move on from there. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you were asked to be a judge, would you? Have you ever asked, been asked to be a judge? I've never, I've never been asked to be a judge, and, and would I? Probably not, because their job is really difficult. But I will tell you... I can you imagine, that, yes. ...that I probably, you know, I, a lot of us, I guess we could say we're armchair quarterbacks here, but a lot mm-hmm. of us know how to judge fights better than what a judge does. And a judge today will very well who scored the fight 117-109 for Provodnikov, right. Max DeLuca from uh-huh. California. Mm-hmm. Max is a great judge, and there are a lot of quality judge out there, judges out there. But again, guys, this is boxing. This is not, uh, I'm going to score more points than you. Right. This is not, I'm going to score more goals than you. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is human judging. So when you have humans involved, with the exception of computers, you have human error. That's exactly what happens yeah. in combat sports. And, that, and that's like you said, that's right. You put you put it right there. You nailed it right in there. Um, there is human error in everything. You know, we're human. We're not robots. We're not a computer. And, you know, we all have different our different aspects. Don't you think, Robert? Yeah, definitely. You know, and um, I totally agree there. But, you know, if I were asked, I don't know. I think that would be. No, I definitely go the other way, Mr. Flores. I mean, I've seen the fight <laughs> a different, the whole totally different oh. way. But you know what? I did have the prediction of our jury, our jury winning, so I kind of was biased towards him. That's winning, right, he so. did. You did. That's right. I remember that. Oh but, my gosh! You know, there's something that I want to ask you, Mr. Ray Flores. Um, I yeah. know, I know, you had a little, a little time in uh, Puerto Rico with Mel- Miguel Cotto, right? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I've worked at some of his events. Uh, yeah. That must have been such an amazing experience being able to be in that atmosphere. I mean, do, how much uh, credit do you give to Mr. Roach for his, his like, revived career? I mean, do you think Mr. Roach has a lot to do with that? I think he does. And, and you know what? I, I was at, Robert, I was in New York at Madison Square Garden the week before wow. uh, to witness Miguel Cotto defeat Sergio Martinez. And Martinez wasn't the same fighter that he was a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. But... Miguel Cotto, this is the best Miguel Cotto I have ever seen. He is fighting on the balls of his feet. He has made a, he's rededicated himself to body punching that left hook that he has. Oh, he's amazing. a sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. Ask Sergio Martinez, who got club by time and time again. I'm sitting there mm-hmm. in the media suite of the garden watching Sergio Martinez just get battered uh-huh. with left hook after left hook after left hook. It's like, man. You got to move out of the way of this. But Cotto was in seek and destroy mentality. That was without a doubt to me, bar none, the greatest performance that we've ever seen Miguel Cotto put on. And you know what? Now mm-hmm. he's got options. As Brian Campbell and Dan Rayfield mentioned, you know, on making the rounds on ESPN.com following that fight at the Garden, mm-hmm. that now if you're Miguel Cotto, where do you go? I know that Bob Arum has stated that there's a possible Tim Bradley fight out there uh, for December. Oh. And I know that there was discussion about possibly Canelo Alvarez. Right. Now that Golden Boy and Top Rank appear to be working together, at least opening up discussions to working on the surface. However, Canelo Alvarez has a fight in two weeks, July 12th, on pay-per-view against Arizlandi Lara, and they're going right. to bring him back in November. Mm-hmm. So Canelo won't be ready or won't be fighting, you know, one Miguel Cotto. Cody's going to be fighting again, from what I've heard, in late November, early December at the Garden. Tim Bradley hasn't had a fight since the, you know, loss that he had against Manny Pacquiao. The logical right. step is to put Bradley in there. And that's an interesting fight if it happens, because Bradley's very fast. He's faster right. than anybody that Cody has fought, with the exception of one, Floyd Mayweather. I mean, now, Pacquiao, yes, but I'm saying in recent memory, guys, it is Bradley, I think, is the fastest, and he, he's a difficult puzzle to solve. That's why I know Marquez <laughs> lost to him in, in October. And, and no, Bradley doesn't go down easily either. He's a warrior, oh, so yeah, he, is. he could take some punches. So that would be an interesting match that I would love to see. That would be. Definitely. Absolutely. Well, Provodnikov knows all about Bradley being able to take some punches because Provodnikov had him concussed after round one, right. and he still kept uh-huh. fighting just on instincts. Yeah, that was amazing. That was another bout there that I... You know, I personally felt Provodnikov should have won, but, yeah. Yeah, out. you and I both, Marty, we, we certainly agree in certain aspects, so right, I'm, yes. I'm with you. Oh, oh, sorry, with all due respect, I got to disagree on that. Oh, <laughs> and again. That, no. that, 
step for that, me. That's why judges happen the way they are. I mean, yeah. beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and that's the way judging is. Right. Now, I have a question to ask you. Um, this is, you know, just going back in time for you, but um, I know I'd listened to a few clips of, about you, and you said that you wanted to do ring announcing and what you're doing now since you were eight or nine years old. Oh, my goodness. So can you recall that time that time and place when you, you know, when had that epiphany, when you realized that? And what were you doing at that time? Like, were you at that family party, or was there something on TV that you were announcing at home? No, I was just honestly watching... Uh, you know, being uh, of Mexican descent, uh, watching uh, Julio Cesar Chavez fights back, and I was, two, I, I think, three, four years old. I mean, one of my first fights that I can re- remember is the the come from behind victory that he had over Maldrick Taylor, and then he followed it up with the pay per view fight against Hector Camacho. And mm-hmm. if I stand to be corrected, guys, that was a big pay per view fight that took place at the Thomas and Mack Center. And that attendance record stood the test of time until his son, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., eclipsed it when he challenged Sergio Martinez for the world title mm-hmm. back in September of 2012. But dating back that, I, I just was so so much of a fan of, of growth. There were big family parties. We were gathered. Yeah, being like, Mexican, I know. Chavez we fight. grew up watching, watching boxing matches, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it was a big thing. It and, was. And watching, and, and I think we're so lucky as boxing fans, especially mm-hmm. kind of growing up, we had an opportunity. Jim Lampley's still going strong. Michael Buffer, you know, outstanding in what he does. Steve mm-hmm. Albert on the Showtime side, who did a brilliant job of calling fights. So I think we were so exposed to so many terrific broadcasters that it kind of gravitated. I gravitated towards that immediately, and I thought, man, oh, man, I'm just, there's nothing like a big fight atmosphere. You get the NBA Finals once a year. The Super Bowl is one time a year. The World Cup's every four years. The UEFA Champions League is once a year. Uh-huh. Big prize fights happen four or five times a year. A year, right. And, and, yeah. and any time, and, and this weekend in Omaha, Nebraska, when Terrence Crawford defends the WBO Lightweight Championship against Udiokis Gamboa, mm-hmm. over 10,000 people are going to be there supporting their native Cornhusker and Terrence Crawford. And I guarantee you, for those that are going to be in attendance, it's going to make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Ooh. And there is nothing like it on the face of the planet. That is why combat sports are the greatest sports on the face of the planet. It is the truest form of sport. It is. Don't, you don't have LeBron James flopping around, mm-hmm. crying to somebody, <laughs> talking about a, a hanging Sorry. toenail. You know, you, right. you don't have, you don't have you know, the officials throwing a flag to kind of put the game in this way or that way. These are fighters with fists. And it's it's fist to face. That's how it's handled. The truest form of sport dating back to the caveman days. That's right. right. It's yeah, man it's versus it's man thing. right there. Two fists. Ready and ready, right? Oh, my goodness. Mr. Flores, I want to ask you a question. What do you make of Chavez Jr.'s career? Do you think that he's going to be as successful as his father? No way. Well, no way, no how. And he had, <laughs> there was, and Robert, there, there was uh-huh. a time where I kind of thought when, when he was fighting Sergio Martinez, okay. when he had him knocked out, and I go, my goodness, I'm like, this is, and we all thought it, yeah. this is Chavez Taylor number two mm-hmm. in uh-huh. a building, uh, in, in a building that his father really kind of helped to make famous in the Thomas and Max Zanturk. Right. Here we go. And then, yes, he lost the fight. But then the knucklehead goes and fails a drug test for marijuana. Yeah, oh, that was a slap in the face. Wait, and wait, then he wait. Follows, <laughs> yeah, he follows it up with missing weight against Brian Vera, losing the fight to Vera, and the judges gave it to Chavez I totally, Jr. I totally agree with you on that one. I couldn't believe it. I thought he lost that fight as well. And he just seems like he's just not... I was hoping that maybe it's, as time goes by he may mature a little bit, but as for now, he's just too immature. His heart's not in it, I don't fear. He's not like his father, you know? No. no. But you know what? It's tough to be like your father because, Mm -hmm. you know, you look at Michael Jordan's kids. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Chavez Jr. was doing a really good job of coming up. But to to be honest with you, it's not even the fact that he's not going to be anywhere near as great as his father. His father is the greatest Mexican fighter of all time. He is. But the fact that he has this arrogance this kind of cockiness, this yeah. sense of entitlement that rubs us as Hispanic boxing fans the wrong way. It's like, wait a minute, wait, wait just a minute <laughs> it, it here. Really, it really does. Who are it you? Really does it. Right. A, a guy like Canelo Alvarez, who's fighting July 12th, here's a young guy that is younger than Chavez Jr. that has been brought along and has been given great opportunities, but he's humble enough and he knows to pick his spots. He's a hard-working come forward fighter that just does his 
job and doesn't partake in knucklehead activities uh-huh. and fail drug tests. Yeah. That's what Chavez Jr. did, and he needs to right. fix that right away. Yeah, he, he sure does. But what do you make of, like... Um like Chavez Jr., and then you put like a Floyd Mayweather with the way Floyd Mayweather's a little cocky. Do you think that he's just doing it for like, like trying to get known? Because it may it works for Mayweather. No, well, here's the thing. Floyd Mayweather has a great saying: "It says skills pay the bills." When you have the skills uh-huh. mm-hmm. and you don't fail drug tests, yeah. and you are beating Hall of Famers, then you can shoot off your mouth and you can talk as much as you want. Gosh. I'll shake your hand. Yeah. And I actually have, you know, not even to be to brag or anything, well, but I, I've, talk, I've sh- shaken Floyd Mayweather's hand and, you know, we've talked for a brief moment. But wow. Chavez yeah. Jr. does not have the skills that pay the bills because he doesn't have the resume to do so. Right. As I mentioned, he's yeah. just a spoiled young man. And Very he true He didn't want to train him. We, we saw it when he was fighting Martinez with the mm-hmm. 24-7. There were certain times he wouldn't show up to the gym, and, and Freddie Roach is waiting there for hours and hours, wow, and then he decides to train cool. yeah. in his apartment or in his in his home that is being rented out Los, or in Los Angeles. Yeah, but dude, go to the gym <laughs> and bust your butt and, and work hard. Right. You know, he does. He does seem to have the skill set for it too. If he was a little bit more mature, I think he'd be very successful. But you know how immature he is. I don't think it's going to last long. Yeah. And you know what? He could. He could still. There, there is a big fight out there. With Carl Frotch. Carl Frotch just knocked out George Groves in front of 80,000 people at Wembley Stadium. And I know that there's talk about a potential Carl Frotch Julio Cesar Chavez match up in the fall, mm. assuming Chavez Jr. can negotiate mm-hmm. a, an extension or can work out his contractual obligations with Top Rank. So that's another topic for another day, guys. That's a yeah. fight inside the. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so many juicy so things here, yeah, Mr. I, I, I Flores. I want to ask you one more question, Mr. Flores, and then we got to go, 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 go to go break. To, yes. but, um, what do you make of the Klitschko uh, drama that's going on right now? The Klitschko drama in regards to his in the, in the Ukraine with the with the politics. Yeah, well, they're they're no. I'm talking about whether at uh, the fighter that he's getting ready to fight is asking for him to take te- a drug test. Drug test. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, you, listen, that's all gamesmanship. I oh, mean, okay. here's the thing: uh, unless a fighter uh, fails a, a drug test, or if a fighter goes and says doesn't participate in, in a drug testing, then I my kind of eyes, you know, I kind of peer up a little bit and say, wait a minute. But Vladimir Klitschko has never, not once, said, yeah. I'm not going to drink a drug, I'm not going to participate in drug testing. I don't need it. And mm-hmm. you know what? It's just this fighter trying to get in the head of Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko has I been the so. king of the mountain in the heavyweight division. Yeah, he's, and here's he's the, the thing, guys. He's a good guy. The heavyweight champion of the world mm-hmm. is years. nothing to frown upon. Mm-hmm. And that means you are the man. You are the king of the boxing jungle. Yep. You are the baddest man on the planet. Right. As Berman Stavern, he is one of the baddest men on the planet. But the baddest man on the planet is Vladimir Klitschko, and this is his opponent's way to try to get him off his Intimidate game. Intimidate guess what? Mm-hmm. You're not going to get Vladimir Klitschko off his game. You no. still got to go to Germany and fight him where he's going to be ridiculously he, he's a godlike out there yep. and and good luck trying to do that but it's games and we should more power to him if you're Vladimir me glitch go you know give me the cup i'll go to the restroom i'll show you i'm playing and then i'll kind of wipe the floor with you inside the ring that's what he oh does. my goodness so many juicy things here we gotta go to uh a break here really quick ray flores do you have any time to stay t- you know stay here with us um, another maybe 10 minutes or do you gotta go yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, I got another five minutes and stuff, guys, because we're getting ready for the uh, NBA oh, draft oh, that's yes, going that's on right. here at ESPN Chicago. So. One more, just quick question. Well, yeah, I just want to ask one more quick question because we were talking about the, you know, the situation with the drug testing and stuff like that. Isn't this the reason why we haven't seen the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight? There's a lot of reasons why. <laughs> well, I'm just saying because I, 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 I still, <laughs> oh, want, to I I still want to see that fight. I know that uh, Mayweather wanted Pacquiao to take a drug test at one point. And I was just wondering, from your st- your view, if that's the reason why we're not seeing this. If, is, Mayweather, <laughs> no, is Mayweather just concerned, or there's, there's got to be a reason why Mayweather don't want to fight Pacquiao? Or just, maybe I'm just not seeing it like you are. No, here, here's the thing, Robert. It, uh-huh. It's not that Mayweather doesn't want to fight Pacquiao. It's okay. just the fact that it, it, it's business entities. Top rank, you know, built or it helped to kind of guide along the career of Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather left. Uh, said some things and, and wasn't oh, uh, too okay. fond of Bob Arum following the split. I get you. So Mayweather, 
is making $50 million every single fight. Uh-huh. I know. Mayweather Cha-ching. does not need mm-hmm. a Manny Pacquiao fight it's a political to keep making thing. money. He's right. the highest paid athlete on the planet on no endorsements. Mayweather has no endorsements, and he's the highest paid athlete on the planet. That's amazing. Other athletes, mm-hmm. like LeBron James, their websites look like NASCAR, a NASCAR <laughs> car. Oh, God. Wow. Mayweather has, guess who Mayweather has a sponsor of himself? TMT, Money Team Baby. Yeah, that's amazing. That's, that's amazing. Boy Mayweather himself. That's right. Well, Mr. And he's making all this money, so Mayweather doesn't need a Pacquiao fight. I just think it's a disagreement between Mayweather promoter, or Mayweather and Bob Arum. I hope they come to the table and resolve it, because I think even still, five years after it should have happened, it'll be a mega fight. It'll draw a monster box office. Who knows if it'll ever happen. I think the logical choice is we are going to see... Floyd Mayweather get in the ring again with Marcos Maidana, number two in September. And then with Manny Pacquiao, I think we get a Juan Manuel Marquez, number five in November at the MGM. And then all will be right with the boxing world, at least as we head towards the holidays, guys. For now, for the time being, yeah, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. We got to go to a break. But thank you so much, Ray Flores. Anchor. Yeah, I'd love to be on as always. If I wasn't pressed for time, I'd love to talk oh, yes. to you guys even more. If you guys need me on next week or the following week, Big fight, as I mentioned, with Terrence Crawford and Yuri Yokis Gamboa. My prediction, a Crawford gets the victory over Gamboa. Looks impressive. And go ahead and marinate a Mar- an Omaha steak because the Cornhusker is getting the victory in his backyard. Oh, right well, there, there you go. got it there from Ray Flores. Thank you so much, Ray. Till next time, we wish you the best and all that you do. Thank hey, you, too. Take care. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Have a great one. You, too. you too. Thank you. Thanks. This is Maria, the Knockout Queen, and uh, we are here in the next round. We're going to be going to a commercial break. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to come back here. we got lots to talk about, and we're going to be recapping on what we just talked about here with uh, Mr. Flores. So uh, make sure to tune in.